teacher Janet, and I will be your science teacher. Before we start, let us first ask for the guidance of our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our lesson for today is bonding by transferring of electrons. Learning competency for this week is Recognize different types of compounds, ionic or covalent, based on their properties such as melting point, hardness, polarity, and electrical and thermal conductivity. We also have the following objectives for the next topic. Describe how atoms form ions, differentiate positive ions, and negative ions based on their tendency to lose or gain an electron. Lastly, recognize examples of ionic bonds. Welcome to my class. And before we start, you need to remember these terms. But before I reveal the term, you must answer the jumbled letters. You need to arrange the letters to reveal the words. You have five seconds to answer. Ready? Let's go! Can you guess these jumbled letters? Very good! It's valence! Now what is a valence electron? Valence electrons are the outermost electrons that are directly involved in chemical bonding. These electrons can be found in the outermost shell, like this one. In the periodic table like this, valence electrons are also known as group or family. What is group or family? When you say group, it is the vertical column of the periodic table. In our periodic table, this is horizontal and this is vertical. Horizontal is known as the periods, while vertical is known as the group or family. So these are the groups in the periodic table. We have 1a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a and 8a. We also have alkaline metals, alkaline metals, halogens, noble gases, and of course the transition metals. Meaning, all the elements in group 1a have one valence electrons, group 2a have two valence electrons, and so on. How many valence electrons does fluorine have? Very good! It has 7 valence electrons since it belongs to group 7A or halogens group. How about boron? How many valence electrons does boron have? Very good! It's 3 since it belongs to group 3A. Can you guess these jumbled letters?
Very good. Is electronegativity? No. What is electronegativity? Electronegativity is a measure of tendency of an atom to attract an electron. The higher its value, the higher its tendency to attract an electron. Or in short, it is the tendency or the ability to attract electrons. Remember that electronegativity increases from left to right, while from top to bottom, it decreases. Based on this, what element has the highest electronegativity? Very good! It's fluorine. Now, I know some of you will say it's helium. Well, yes, it has the highest electronegativity based on this. But, technically, elements in the normal gases are exempted because they don't need to combine with other elements to become stable. Can you guess this jumble of letters? Very good! It's ionization energy. What is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the energy needed to pull or remove one or more electrons from a neutral atom. Same with the electronegativity. From left to right, it increases and from top to bottom it decreases now what element has the highest ionization energy do you know very good it's helium remember that noble gases don't need to attract electrons since they already have eight valence electrons these are the terms that you need to remember valence electrons electronegativity, and ionization energy. Now you know. Why do atoms combine? Atoms need to combine to become stable. For them to become stable, they need to follow the octet rule. Now, what is octet rule? The octet rule refers to the tendency of atoms prefer to have 8 electrons in the valence shell. This is the reason why noble gases rarely react with other elements since they are already stable. What are ions? An ion is defined as an atom or molecule that has gained or lost one or more of its valence electrons, giving it a net positive or negative electrical charge. Again, if an atom loses or gains valence electrons, an ion is formed. It can be a positive or a negative ion. Now, let's look at this. What happens when an atom loses an electron? Very good. It becomes positive. Remember, if it loses, transfers, or gives electrons, it becomes positive. For example, sodium. Sodium becomes positive since it transfers its electrons. Remember this term, cat has pose, meaning cat ion is positive. Now what happens when an atom gains electrons? Very good, it becomes negative. Remember, if it gains or receives electrons, it becomes negative. For example, fluorine. Fluorine becomes negative since it receives electrons. So we already know how to form ions. Let's discuss the ionic bonds. What are ionic bonds? An ionic bond is a chemical bond wherein there is a transfer of an electron from one atom to another. For an ionic bonding to occur, there must be an electron donor, often a metal, and an electron acceptor, often a non-metal. The transfer of electrons is referred to as electrovalence. The atom that loses one or more electrons will turn into a positive ion and will be called a cation. The other atom that gains one or more electrons will become a negative ion and will be referred to as an anion. 
These are the ideas that you need to remember in ionic bonds. First, it is the transfer of electrons. Second, it is a combination of metal and non-metal, and they are electrostatically attracted to each other. And third, the electronegativity difference should be greater than 1.9. Let's discuss the step in bonding by transfer of electrons. First, select a metallic and a non-metallic element. For example, we have sodium. Sodium is under group 1A. So how many valence electrons does sodium have? Very good. So it has one. And the atomic symbol of sodium is Na. If you can still remember the octet rule, it needs to have 8 valence electrons to become stable. So if sodium is under group 1A, in what group are you going to pair sodium so it will become stable? Very good! In group 7A. Now, let's choose fluorine. Second, write the Lewis symbol and electronegativity value of both elements. Lewis symbols are diagrams that show the number of valence electrons of a particular element. It uses dots to represent the lone pairs. In writing the Lewis dot structure, always start in the upper part of the symbol. For example, sodium has one valence electron, so it is written like this. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, so we are going to start with the upper part and occupy first each side of the symbol before it is paired up. Third, subtract the electronegativity value of the metallic element from the non-metallic element. The electronegativity of sodium is 0.93, while fluorine is 3.98. Subtract 3.98 to 0.93. The answer is 3.05. 3.05 is greater than 1.9. So sodium fluoride is an example of ionic bond. Fourth, with the use of an arrow, show the complete transfer of electrons. So let's show again the Lewis dot of sodium and fluorine. Then use an arrow to show the complete transfer. <coughs> Lastly, indicate the formation of cation and an ion. From this, what element has a positive charge? Very good, it's sodium. How about the negative charge? Very good, it's fluorine. Now, it's your turn. Identify the following if they are examples of ionic bond and circle. Check if they are ionic and in circle X if not. You have 5 seconds to answer. Ready? Is it an ionic bond? Very good. It's check. Is it an ionic bond? Very good. It's check. Is it an ionic bond? No, it's not. This is not an example of an ionic bond. Is it an ionic bond? No, it's not. This is not an example of an ionic bond. Is it an ionic bond? Very good. It's check. Can you give your own example of an ionic bond? Very good! These are all examples of an ionic bond that can be seen in our home. Let's summarize by answering these questions. Why do atoms combine? Very good! They need to combine to become stable. How are you going to know if the compound is an ionic bond? Very good! 
we need to remember this. It is a complete transfer of electrons. It is a combination of metal and non-metal. And lastly, its electronegativity difference is greater than 1.9. I hope you enjoy our class today. And before we end it, I'm going to give you an additional activity. Choose three combinations that will result in ionic bonding. You may use the polling electronegativity values in the next slide. Good luck! And that's the end of our discussion. Again, this is Teacher Jeanette. See you again in my next class. Preview.